Jamie, do you want to talk about uh, briefly about uh, your trip, or uh, I guess uh, you're not you don't even talk about it on an Antifa. My you trip. Want to, you want to drive? Uh, yes. Well, Jamie, uh, we should put a link at the very least to your piece. Jamie's. Uh, well, will you do the? Just do, tell me this. There's two. The, I have two or three questions from the piece. That's quite what a is Aussie Fest? Uh, it was a mashup uh, indie rock music festival and TED Talk type experience. That um, doesn't explain it. The to music me. was later in the day. It was talks and panels. Where was this? In, it was in Central Park. It was talks and panels in Central Park's uh, Rumsey Playfield, the same place they have Summer Stage. And who put it on? Um, it's a website called Aussie Media. That is uh, funded by uh, Silicon Valley uh, venture capital money. And uh, they actually named themselves after King Ozymandias uh, because they have wildly misinterpreted that uh, famous poem about him to mean uh, think big, but be humble because then you'll never die. Well, how long has Aussie media been around? Uh, this is actually the third one that they've had. Right, me, um, and it doesn't seem to be working because How nobody knows about it still. Is it possible that a media company that's been around for three years and all I do is read media has been existing and they are big enough that they can have these huge festivals with Hillary Clinton showing up and I've never heard of the name? Um, I would say that the festivals are definitely a loss leader in an effort to get the name out, but um, I would call it a. It sounds more like a, a loss, a loss, a, a bit of a propaganda arm of the people who are funding it, which uh, is not limited to, but including uh, the widow of Steve Jobs. Oh, huh. and it's news okay. for the insatiable. So the the stuff that uh, really captured my attention was that Grover Norquist was there oh my God. as as part of the resistance. Yep. Like, like explicitly? Uh, no, I mean, it was a bipartisan thing uh, representing <sighs> the left and right wings of neoliberalism. He was representing um, people who vape. Neoliberals who vape. He, Neoliberals he who was vape. representing, uh, you know, stumpy austerity crusaders who go to Burning Man. You know, speaking of Janice, I've told this story before, but in 2000 and maybe nine, uh, Janine and I were asked to host a sort of like late night comedy show, talk show, uh, at the Aspen Ideas Festival. And Grover Norquist was the guest. And every time I would ask Grover Norquist a question, like, you know, it was, it was not on video. There was no video. So it was just like, it was a totally casual thing. Every time I asked Grover Norquist a question, he would turn the question around to attacking public sector employees. Hmm. And his uh, seven years later, eight years later, boom. Yep. Uh, and what was the part about everybody should accept the gig economy? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think this was one of the most, uh, I mean, it's all propaganda, but this is one of the most blatantly uh, ideological parts of the festival that I saw. Um, which was a panel consisting of uh, our friend Steven Pinker, uh, a venture capital financier Mike Moe, and uh, educational entrepreneur uh, Cindy Mee. And uh, the way they talked about it, they acknowledged that the gig economy is a thing. Mike Moe actually said, you know, soon people are going to have 15 different careers before they retire, if they retire. And he said, uh, it's like gravity, folks. You can't fight it. All you can do is adapt build a bridge to the 21st century which uh i found I, incredibly incredibly depressing i um that's always the when language. when we were looking for a, a middle school for myla we um you know you're not you're not 100 in, in charge of these things um when you're uh married like uh, there's a, a democracy cuck cuck and cuck uh so we did go visit a charter school and uh, and I was curious anyways, uh, but I was. And fortunately, the person who ran the charter school came out and talked about being introduced themselves as an educational entrepreneur. <laughs> and honestly, and, and the presentation they gave was. I would imagine very similar to any presentation you would give for any type of like uh, we're pitching you uh, our new marketing campaign or whatever it is. And it was so corporate 
that um, we both ran out of there going like that. Like, can you imagine coming up in front of a, a group of parents who are looking to send their kid to your school and you don't say, as an educator, right? Because like, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that you can teach, not as an educational entrepreneur. That like, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine it because I just saw many people speaking about children in the language of the market and using phrases like curriculum product. <laughs> no. Oh, no. We consider ourselves hey, not folks. just educators, but also entrepreneurs who will help prepare your children for a flexible gig economy. Did anybody bring up, did anybody bring up um, Bill Gates? I mean, it's not talking about education reform there, right? I mean, nobody... Uh, uh, they talked about education entrepreneurship. They talked about progress. Um, she said, at, and this is even worse than a charter school because, you know, it's, uh, it's called VIP Kid, her, uh, her company. Uh, yeah. And they take uh, down on their luck uh, American instructors and they get to teach business English to uh, hundreds of Chinese kids via uh, the magic of the World Wide Web. And she said, uh, you know, what, what teacher doesn't, it's every teacher's dream to connect with uh, thousands of students all over the world. They, they actually advertise, uh, you know, with no benefits, of course, and uh, no, uh, they actually advertise it as a positive on their website that you don't have to have any contact with the parents. You could hear Thomas Friedman's, like, erection <laughs> expanding yeah, I was from Chevy ask, where are the iPads? Yeah, where are the iPads? And where was Thomas Friedman? He's really falling on his luck. It sounds like this, this whole project is like a, he, he was there in spirit. Right. He's just floating above it in some type of, uh, like, they, cloud hey. of outsourcing.